I've seen a lot of posts about tarot readers um, discussing not to read for people with mental health issues. Personally, I think when people are struggling with mental health issues, that is the time when tarot can really help, whether that's reading for yourself or whether that's reading for someone else. If you're reading for someone else, professional or a friend, always presume they could have mental health issues. It's not obvious. So many of us do struggle. So I'm gonna give you some clear tips for what to do for yourself or someone else. And the reason I'm sharing this is this literally was my reading for myself today. The Three of Swords, the Nine of Swords, the Five of Cups. Pretty full on. I'm reading with the Druid Craft deck. If I've got a client that I do think is in a very vulnerable state, this is the deck I would use. I love this deck. I think the imagery, despite these cards, tends to be more gentle. If I'm not certain of someone's mental state, I would be very careful about the imagery in the decks you're using. I would steer clear of decks like Deviant Moon and such like, um, unless you know that they're gonna work with who you're reading for. So what do you do? You sat down, smiling at your friend or your client, and boom, you get a reading like that. The first thing you do is you go to the deepest, darkest card and you explain that first. Because anyone with this reading is gonna go straight to the Nine of Swords. If I'd had a really good card here, the Ace of Cups or Ten of Cups, don't bother talking about the good cards. Go straight to the dark card because that's all your client or you or who you're reading for is looking at. Okay, and I, if I'm reading for myself, if I'm reading for someone else, I would make it clear this reflects where you are now. This is not a prediction. This is a reflection. And I would talk them through it. Often at this point, um, clients will cry. Um, often clients have been trying to bottle it in. Um, <clears throat> for me, this is very, I'm separated from my husband, son's birthday tomorrow. We have to come together as a family day. It's not filling me with much uh, joy. So that's about it. Once I've helped my client accept and understand this, I then do advice. Advice, if you're working with somebody that is feeling overwhelmed, stressed or unable to cope, advice is the most important thing. I am reshuffling the rest of the deck and I am asking the cards for advice. If a client feels unstable or is clearly having difficulty processing, I will write the advice down in bullet points for them. And if it's a Skype reading, I will email them in bullet points. Because often if somebody's in overwhelm, all they're gonna hear is the bad news, okay? They will overlook anything good you can say. So I will literally write the points out in bullet point or email so they know. So advice, ten of swords, so often, in a reading like this, this is the advice card. First thing I often do with a client is I will say there is no 11. This is the change point. We've got, always use the imagery in the cards because our clients, yourself, a friend, can think you're making it up, you're trying to be nice. So use the imagery in the cards so that they can see it. I always point with the Ten of Swords to the sunrise or the sunset, change. I often will find the Ace of Swords and compare the 10 and talk about this is, you know, getting out the negative thoughts. This is about writing down your negative thoughts, you know, um, phoning a friend and just having good old splurge about how you feel. This is about having a good cry. This is about throwing some mugs to the bottom of the garden and getting it out so that you can feel clearer. Advice card, three of cups. Now already we've had a, a connection here between, I said about ringing a good friend, getting it out. We've got the connection, this is the card of friendship. And so at this point I would be writing it down, journal, you know, speak to a good friend. The four of wands is about um, celebrating the smallest of things. If you are gonna read cards, particularly if you're gonna read for someone else, but even for yourself, you need to know what the practical advice in every card is. I have got a crib sheet for that, I will put it in the notes. So this is often, in this sort of reading, this is about celebrating the good moments. 
you know, having a nice cup of coffee and sitting in the sunshine, talking to my kids about their day, lighting some candles in the evening because I finished work, even though it's just me. If at this point the client is engaged and feeling better, I will then make an informed choice. Sometimes if a client is in a really difficult state, I will not do any more predictions. I will maybe do another layer of um, advice here, or I might talk about each one in more depth. Um, but I only do predictions if I feel that the client is in a mental state to handle bad news. I'm gonna do one prediction card for me. If you do a prediction card, or three prediction cards, and it's for you or a client, and it's negative, add an advice card, okay? Ad advice cards are key. The future is not fixed. When someone is in a negative mindset, they're often on an inner spiral. Life is getting worse and worse and worse. If you can give somebody using the cards really practical advice to improve their life, you can be the person that turns it around. Boom. <laughs> there we go. The future, the tower. I'm not surprised. I think there are unsettled times coming between my husband and I. I think there are more difficult days ahead. It's exactly what my intuition tells me. So now I'm following my own advice and advice card. My husband and I may be separated, but I don't think emotionally we are yet. I think this is the argument that brings about the end. The two of ones is new beginnings. So there is a new beginning after the ending of the tower. I hope that's helped. Um, and there will be a link to my crib sheet for um, positive advice for every one of the cards in the comments.